Joining us on the line is Dr. Steve Hammond. He's been practicing obstetri obstetrics and gynecology. He's an OBGYN in Jackson, Tennessee for 40 years. He's delivered over 4,000 babies. Early in his career, he performed over 700 abortions. He's also a key voice in our documentary, Choosing Death, available over at dailywire.com when you become a subscriber. Dr. Hammond, thanks so much for joining the show. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me, Ben. Glad to be with you. So let's talk about some of the misinformation surrounding the medical status of abortion. Uh, the, the left likes to proclaim that abortion is perfectly antiseptic and anodyne, uh, that, that really nothing happens, that it's, it's safer than pregnancy, which again is sort of a weird argument to me because that argues in favor of the sterilization, presumably of all women in, in favor of their safety. But you know, what are the actual, what are the actual details of abortion? And let, let's talk everything from like early stage abortion to late stage abortion, because obviously by the time you get to the late stage abortion, you're talking about what to any human being would look like a perfectly obvious human rights violation. But why don't we walk through how these things work? Well, <clears throat> if, I think if the public could see abortion through my eyes, what I've seen in my life, the statistics of, uh, of uh, the polls that you'd see would be totally different. Um, surgical abortions um, start as early as uh, a pregnancy test can be um, confirmed, probably six weeks. And in some states, of course, as you know, abortion is legal up to the point of birth. Um, in, in my case, I did abortions uh, up to about 13 weeks gestation. Abortion is a moral procedure. Uh, it uh, uh, ends a human life. And um, the, all the statistics that show, and this has been repeated over and over again, that abortion is safer than uh, delivery is a fallacy, partly because of the way the statistics are uh, accumulated. Uh, perinatal mortality is calculated on the basis of uh, live births instead of total uh, pregnancies. And uh, it's really difficult to tell you what the uh, mortality rate for abortion is uh, because uh, there are several states that don't even report their statistics to the CDC. And most uh, deaths from abortion actually occur remote from the procedure itself, such as hemorrhage, uh, sepsis, and so forth. And the cause of death is listed on the uh, death certificate as sepsis or hemorrhage or so forth. So it's really hard to tell you what the uh, death rate from abortion is. So Dr. Hammond, you know, the, the argument of the left when it comes to abortion, again, is, is very euphemistic. They don't like to talk about the details of what happens in an abortion. You performed over 700 of them. First of all, what, what was it that caused you to stop performing abortions and become pro-life? Yeah. Well, um, <clears throat> I was doing abortions for about a year and a half. We only did abortions uh, up to about 13 weeks. There's usually about three to four tablespoons of amniotic fluid uh, in the uh, catheter when you do the uh, procedure. Uh, well, one Saturday morning, I put a uh, cannula in the uterus and uh, on about a 16 year old, we had made a terrible mistake in judging her pregnancy. You have to remember in those days, we didn't have real time ultrasound to confirm uh, what we were doing. We were flying by the seat of our pants, so to speak. Uh, there, the canister that we were suctioning filled up with amniotic fluid right away and then the baby kicked me. And I think that was the turning point in my life when I first, I mean, I looked at dismembered pieces of baby then for years and it didn't really move me. But I think when I felt, the, I know when I felt the baby kick me, it really brought home to me that I was taking a human life and it didn't matter whether the uh, baby was, and, and this baby was probably five months along, probably weighed about two pounds, had to be dismembered and removed in pieces horrific procedure. Um, it doesn't matter though how far along the baby is. Uh, human life begins at conception. Uh, that's kind of been our, um, that's been scientific information for many, many years until recently. So Dr. Hammond, one of the arguments that is constantly made by the left is that a, they, they make it sound as though abortion is medically necessary on a routine basis. They, they, will, they will suggest that that a huge number of women require abortion for the preservation of their life, if not their health. Uh, so what are the actual statistics about when is abortion medically necessary? Is it ever medically necessary? Well, uh, abortion is really never medically necessary. Now, there's an attempt to conflate terms here. Um, the medical profession uses the term abortion, ICD-10 codes, as we 
um, uh, see a patient who has a miscarriage, we might call that, uh, a, we might code that out as a missed abortion, an incomplete abortion, or an inevitable abortion, or a tubal abortion. That word abortion is used in all of those medical terms, but it refers to a miscarriage. In those cases, removing that abnormal pregnancy, uh, and there are many reasons for that, about 25% of all pregnancies uh, conceptions will end in a miscarriage. Um, but those are not abortions. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about ending uh, a pregnancy uh, in the womb that is alive uh, for the purpose of preventing that woman from having that baby. So uh, the conflating those terms is, I think, done almost intentionally to confuse the public. Um, I've had patients come to me and say, well, I had to have an abortion because I had to have a DNC when my baby died in utero. Well, that's not an abortion. That's not what we're talking about here. And the, the other example that the left likes to use, and, and they, they do lie about that all the time. They, they, they'll say that if you had a miscarriage and then you have to have a DNC in order to clean out the uterus, that this is somehow equivalent to the killing of a, a life that is growing in the womb, which it clearly is not. I mean, it's, it's an absurd contention. The other one they like to use a lot is ectopic pre pregnancy, suggesting that the removal of an ectopic pregnancy is going to be made illegal by pro-life laws. Can you explain ectopic pregnancy and what we're talking about here? Sure. I actually heard a pundit on TV just a few days ago actually claim that, that the, in certain states, this would probably, this might be outlawed, that a physician removing an ectopic pregnancy um, might be uh, found to be criminal. And that, that's ridiculous. Uh, we were removing ectopic pregnancies in the 50s uh, and 60s before Roe versus Wade was ever passed. So uh, abortion was illegal in those days. And we had no reason to hesitate to save a woman's life by removing an ectopic. An ectopic pregnancy, uh, Ben, is when the fertilized egg traveling down the fallopian tube, it gets interrupted in its passage to the uterus and it sets up housekeeping in the fallopian tube. Well, a, a pregnancy can't live in the fallopian tube. It will grow to about eight weeks, maybe sometimes nine weeks, but it's not going to be able to survive there. It's going to rupture and it endangers the mother's life when that happens. Um, so very, very uh, different from what we're talking about, abortion. Well, that is uh, Dr. Steve Hammond. He is the co-author of a book called The Christian and Abortion, a non-negotiable stance with Emily Levante. And uh, he's also one of the voices that's heard in our, our very important documentary, Choosing Death, over at dailywire.com. Become a member today and you can watch it. Dr. Hammond, really appreciate your time and your insight. Thank you, Ben, for having me. I hope you enjoyed that clip from The Ben Shapiro Show. If you did, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you stay up to date with all our future content.